it's Shama here. I'm here with Dev Charney from Los Angeles Apparel. I'm so deeply excited to get a chance to speak with you about the market, about the industry. I feel like you've been such a pioneer, almost politically, in how we think about retail and fashion and what is happening in terms of supply chain and all of these amazing things. So thank you so much for taking a few minutes to share a bit about your business, but also like what's exciting you about happening in retail and what you're standing for. Well, I think right now we're in a movement where brands could are directly connecting to consumers. That's the way to go. Mm -hmm. I believed in that for 20 years when I opened my stores, when I was running American Apparel. We really thought it was important to connect to consumers and skip the traditional retailer. Yep. Um, and that's happening again, but even more intensively because now a brand has access to everybody's phone of course. in a massive way. And... Um, it's getting more and more and more intense and it's allowing for more profit to go to the brand Absolutely. And, and it's more efficient and also more profit can go to the worker. It's stimulating domestic manufacturing in, in, a, in a big way. So I'm, I'm excited about it for the worker and for the, for the brand and for the consumer. The loser is the traditional <laughs> retailer. But, you know, but it's the, evolving anyway. It's right? evolving. I mean, there, there are some traditional exactly. retailers are getting the coming online retailers as of well as I mean we all wish for everybody but yeah. to me the people that work the hardest are well one the worker is the hardest yes. work the, the person sewing the clothes and number two um, you know the brand has to create the energy around a product absolutely yeah. absolutely so when you start to think about things like fair labor and the economics behind that and we start to think about how now politically right everyone's now talking about some of these strategies on increasing the minimum wage, are you sitting back and going like, ha 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 guys, like told you so, like this is important, this is a good cultural phenomenon? Well, we were a little bit ahead of the yes. curve on some of these issues. Yeah. We've been talking about them for 20 years, but it's yeah. very important that clothing makers discover how to make clothes without uh, relentlessly pursuing slave-like wages, because that's over. Why is it over? Because birth rates are going down, birth rates are declining. Yep. Number one. Uh, number two, uh, people don't feel good about buying products that are made in low-wage settings. Mm. It's, it's just bad all around. But it's not even economically sustainable. Plus, a lot of uh, the, the transportation costs to get into some of these places, sure. to pay the low wages, is getting more and more costly as, it, as transportation goes up. As there's world instability also Absolutely. With, 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 with duties and tariffs, of course. there's a lot to be said for paying a little bit more and getting what you need when you need it and how you need and it. And owning the process, right? So when you think about control, I mean, it's obviously better for the workers. You get to produce a product to your own terms, right? When you need it. So right. And optimize satisfy. the quality. Absolutely. And here, like on this t-shirt, you know. I made new samples, I yeah. tried things on, yeah. I revised things, yeah. I think about it, I touch the it. The speed. The speed, but also the ability to, to really uh, massage your the craft, you know what I mean? Like to really right. refine, you know, what the curves should be, what the colors should be, what the textures should be, pivoting, making things differently, mm -hmm. responding to waves of demand, or if demand declines, backing up, or if you come up sure. with a better idea, you're not stuck with all this inventory that you made somewhere else. Absolutely. You know, so you can pivot. You're playing. You're on the basketball court without the dead weight of offshoring. Which is incredible. So when we start to think about how now brands are starting to look at your model, right? And they're like, oh shit, like he's he's figured something out. How do I start to adapt to that? You know, a lot of brands that are just getting started or they've proven something in the market. Let's say, for example, they've gone down the path of you know, starting off production overseas and they're like, oh man, now I want to start to integrate some better values and they're bringing things back, right? What are some ideas or ways in which you think a brand can actually pivot, right? From going from international manufacturing to saying, oh man, like we you now do a little bit of both. Prices. You yeah. can do a little bit of both. There's yeah. no rules. This is a open playing field. Yeah. There's nothing wrong per se with making things in places like Mexico. That, you know, it's close, it's nearby, it can work, or the Caribbean. Sure. There's not, it's not, it's not that China is bad, although it looks like prices are elevating in China under all circumstances because they don't have the workers there anymore. Think certain products are more expensive to make in China than the United States there right now. But what sure. people can do is look for small manufacturing out there, th uh, shops with five, six machines out in Los Angeles or outside of Los Angeles, 
or buy your own equipment and start watching videos and start making start ma things. So talking about videos, I have to say that one of my favorite things is looking on Instagram and seeing you go live. Right? I, gotta, so I haven't done like, that in about a month so and I, I gotta like, do that. I'm gonna that, do that tonight. <laughs> I think so when I think about kind of connecting, right, and kind of being in front of your customer as a founder, right, just getting in there and talking to people, that's a big decision, right? A lot of company owners are like, Oh, I wanna be behind the scenes, like I'm afraid, I'm not gonna I try to do it. that sometimes, like, but it doesn't you know. work. <laughs> so talk to me. So tell me about like, you know, how are you so damn comfortable going on Instagram live and just like shooting the shit? Um, well, there's no one there. You don't have like it's it's it, you just pretend you're alone with one person. I mean, it doesn't really matter. People are looking for authenticity. They're yes. looking for they want to hear about your mistakes. They want to hear about your downfalls. Yeah. They embrace imperfect characters. Yeah. That's when you know we've seen that time and time again. If a if a can if a political candidate is too polished, they often don't attract the interest of ours in our right. society right yep. now. Because we're looking for authenticity and we're, and we're looking to embrace people that have some kind of struggle. It's a very weird time. Yeah. The, 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 the public is very critical of people's flaws, but then they're also embracing flaws. More accepting, right? And, and I think there's some... One level they're not accepting. Yeah. Like one level they're ripping people down and one level they're propping people up. It's a very volatile time. But if you don't get in the ring you're not gonna get to play. Yes, and you know, when I think about like being first to market or testing something, a lot of it is about how do you just get where people are and before everyone else does? And I think being able to connect with your consumers in that way is also just so appealing to our Gen Zs that are coming up. So everyone talks about millennials and I'm like, guys, Millennials are getting old. They're old now, right? It's like, yeah. you know, Gen Z's are up to Geezers. like... Yeah. <laughs> so Gen Z's are like, you know, four to 24 years old, are right? They, yeah. And they are the ones who are going, I want a brand that has values. I want a brand that's connecting with me. I don't want any bullshit. And they want, they don't want fast fashion. No. They want good quality. They want quality. They, they like vintage, they like good quality. They they don't need to change their clothes as often. They're exactly. not interested in that. Yeah. Exactly, and they're looking for brands who are gonna connect with them. So inadvertently, and I don't know if there was thought behind this, but your business model and your brand values have really just propped themselves up, right, in order to almost just naturally attract all of these Gen Zs and kind of generations to come who are saying, hey, like, I'm taking a stand with my purchasing power and investing into products and brands that mean something to me. Well, it's two things are going on. One, they want to buy things that are sustainably made. But even when they don't, it turns out that things that are made sustain, sustainably made are also often artisanally made. Yes. You know, it's like that's that it was. It's not, that there's some imperfections. It's not institutional quality, like yes. off a conveyor system of a massive factory, you know, in, 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 in some remote part of the world where workers are just robotically making something, but sure. that someone worked on it. Maybe there there could even be a little hole. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it's almost better. Exactly. The authenticity yeah. of something. Like garment dye is very strong right now. Yes. Because it's like you can touch it, it's washed, yes. it's shrunk yes. down. Yeah. You know, you only need to buy one really good sweatshirt. Right. You know, like I usually I, I mean I own my own clothing company, but I like my one hoodie. Thank if you. I lose it, I get pissed. And I, <laughs> where did it go? I left it in my mother's house in Montreal. I swear. I, I need her to send it back to. Like yeah. I rather she send yeah, me that yeah, one yeah. back because yeah. I go buy, yeah, and yeah, get yeah. a new go one. You know, to re reuse is a big thing. Um, you know, re more than recycling, I think yeah. is reusing because recycling is still. It's hazard. also hard. I mean, recycling in our industry is also really difficult, you know? I mean, It's it happening. To, There's it a is, lot out there. But also, there. like, yeah. kind of understanding, like, oh, the fiber content, how is it going to break down? Who are the recycling plants that are going to take that? What, you know, I mean, we're... It's very complicated, yeah. but ma a, making a product, whether it's a shoe or a T-shirt or jewelry or a bracelet, something that really is means something to you, you know, like, Absolutely. really, like, people are interested in that right now. Absolutely. Less is more, and they'll pay more. They will pay more. So talk Less to me. is more, and they'll pay more. That's a good theory. Talk to me a little bit about kind of your rapid scale. So, you know, this business is new. This particular business is new. Um, you've been scaling up quickly. Last I read, there was a pretty high valuation on the business. You guys are expanding. From what I hear, also manufacturing for other brands. I mean, there's yeah. a lot that's happening behind the scenes. Um, how big is the company now? What's on the horizon? What we have about 450 about? employees. We're doing a, you know, 
probably producing about six million garments this year. Yeah. Um, we're doing a number of millions of dollars per month and it's growing quickly. Yeah. And one of the reasons it's scalable is because we make it ourselves in Los yeah. Angeles. So we don't have to worry about, oh, the factory's not working with us. And we do stuff like very fast because we're in LA. Los Angeles has the power right now. Yes. As a city, we have yes, the infrastructure, does. we have fabrics, we have machines, we have workers, we have, we, it's business, the apparel industry is scalable in Los Angeles. Mm. You know, it's it's quite extraordinary. We can get an order on a Friday night and deliver it to an event by Saturday. Like, wow. you know, yeah. bang, bang, bang. And and costs are less important. People want it when they want it, when they, they need it. They, you know, if it's $10 or $13 each, it doesn't matter, but you get it to point eight. And also you have all this trip, these trips with influencers where something trends online and they need 9,000 pieces course, right away. you gotta make it happen, yeah. Yeah. So we're able to make it happen. We don't have much competition right now. We don't anticipate that we're going to have a lot of competition yeah. because it's hard to kind of master the process and make the magic happen. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, I think what's so also fascinating is you not only have transparency around your supply chain, but also like when someone goes to your website, you have the bios of your models. Like you have so many, like it's, uh, it's transparency across like who is the company, right? And like, what are we? And you know, I think there's something to be said about really putting a face, right, to a brand and being able to connect with people and right. say like, hey, we're not gonna like shy behind some corporate facade here. You know, we're a growing healthy company, but we also represent our people, right? People can see themselves reflected um, on your website and through your, through your employees. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. I think people wanna see that. They wanna know, we know the faces of our workers because we don't subcontract, yeah. you know? It's, it's harder because you're putting yourself out there, but that the customer could see inside and really penetrate the spirit of the company, I think that's important, awesome. you know, yeah. like psychologically get in. That, that's a big part of it. It's yeah. a huge piece of it. So my final questions are around marketing and like brick and mortar. So like, I would love to hear kind of your thoughts as you're forecasting, not only marketing strategy and kind of what's exciting and on the forefront that you guys are testing, um, but also, what are some ideas that you now have around physical space? You know, I think. I think I think opening stores is important. Yeah. I think brands can do pop-ups. They can find. There's a lot of inventory of cheap space right now. Alternative spaces, like an office that becomes a store, or yeah. a, a store that's kind of temporary closed down. Sure. I think it's important to get in the store on the cheap and get out on the cheap. Um, not burden yourself with long-term leases little pop-ups on the beach, whatever. There's all kinds of ways of connecting with customers. Yeah. I do believe in retail. I, people say, are you opening stores? Yeah, of course I'm gonna open stores. But it's like, yeah, it's still good to open yeah. stores. It's yeah. just different because you have people on their phones. But it's nice to also meet them in person, like meeting you in person. Yeah, totally. It changes things. So, Absolutely. And to touch fabrics and see what's yeah. going on and see how heavy they are and try something yeah. on. and. That, that's it's visceral, right? It's yes. like all of a sudden you see the face so, of your customer, you understand how it looks and fits. Of so course. I do believe I yeah. do believe in retail. Yeah. I believe in retail. I think it's I'm not saying you shouldn't have a bricks and mortar. And marketing store. strategies coming up for you guys. I mean, interesting, fun uh, collaborations, anything you can share with us. I think there's like, also <laughs> the, the subterranean buzz yeah. is important. Yeah. Word of mouth is really big yeah. right now. Getting people the product so other people can see it. Billboard, I think billboards, billboards are still are good. Great. Yeah. Still, billboards yeah. are still real. Are I'm looking forward to doing a billboard campaign. I believe in that. Um, you know, and I think unfortunately, this guy's it's kind of a little big brotherish, yeah. but you got to go to Instagram. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. Instagram's yeah. big. Get in there and. It, it's tough though, but you got to yeah. keep posting and going. You got to do it. You got to yeah. get live. You got to talk. I got to do a live. You're you got to do a live. <laughs> you got to do a live. People see you're amazing. So any parting words, right? The guys out here, they are in the trenches, right? You got small business owners who are like, all right, put it on my Okay, the dress. work life balance thing, <laughs> throw that aside. Okay, <laughs> that is that is that is a uh, uh, that is untrue. The guys or the women or the men that I know that make it, sure. go in full bore. I mean, there's some examples of people that manage work-life balance, but yeah. I don't see it as often as the when people, intensity. You yeah. gotta stay in it 
to own it. It's got to be intense. It's got to be 365 yeah. or it, it, that reduces your risk of failure. And once it's running, yeah. you can relax and go to Whole Foods, you know, but in the meantime, Postmates. You got everything's gotta it, no. come to you. In the meantime, it's McDonald's. <laughs> Go. Okay, like you don't get you don't so get luxury. No, there is no four hour work week, right? When people talk about it's seven oh, days yeah. a week. I excuse my language, bust your ass. Yeah. And stand up for what you believe in. Yeah. Do not let go. Hold on and pull and go and go and go and go. And once you get your business gets into second gear, which yeah. mine is just getting into second gear right now, then you're safe. Once you're in third gear, you're even yeah. more safe. Then yeah. eventually you're in overdrive. Yeah. And that's where All you right. want to get. That's that's <laughs> when you that. that's when you can fly private. Yeah. Okay? That's when yeah. you can fly. And keep watch your overhead. Yeah. Penny pinching is a good thing when you're in first gear. Like yeah. keep it tight. Do things yourself. Not necessarily delegating everything. That's for later. Micromanagement is good. People, these are things we all oh, don't micromanage. Yeah. Build up a nice fat org chart. Work life. Yeah, no. that, that's that's throw it out the window. That's that's the fake stuff that they try and teach you. The politically correct stuff that doesn't work. No. You got to get in, lick the floor, and go. And if you can't do it, don't expect an Someone employee to do it. Do. Know what you're having your employees do. Know how long it takes to load a truck. Yeah. Unloading trucks. You know, make the product yourself if you can. Experience everything right. firsthand. Right. Master your business. Own your business. Own the process and win. I That's fucking it. love that. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. on that note, uh, we all just need to go out there and win. Yeah. And, uh, you know, lick the floor. This one looks quite dirty. Ah! So, you know. <laughs> So I'm ready. I'm ready to do my push-ups. Um, all right, you want guys. Do push-ups right now? I mean, I could do a push-up. I could do one push-up, but I couldn't go all the way to the ground. Really? Can you do a good push-up? I could do like I could. Yeah. If you you really want to do a push-up? Yeah, we could okay, do a push-up. Let's push do a push-up. Okay. Let's do okay. push-ups. I'm like push -ups. I'm like push okay. I'm I'm yeah. like oh god, you guys. This is totally push -ups. embarrassing. Push-ups. I, I can do, do like it, maybe do half of them. Is that okay? Riot. Um, Are we in trouble? Time. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs>